Uh, Brian Donnellan is Professor of, Informa of Information Systems Innovation at Maynooth University and is Academic Director of the Innovation Value Institute. Thanks. Great. Thanks very much. Okay, I don't see uh, Pauline or Stephanie in the audience, but I'd like to thank them anyway for inviting me along today to talk about uh, what we're doing in the Innovation of Value Institute. And uh, just say that I've uh, found today really interesting. Uh, I had just had no idea there was so much activities going on across such a diverse range of uh, industries. Um, fascinating stories from startups. So thanks very much again for the invite and I'm um, happy to be here. So uh, this will be a little bit different than some of the uh, earlier presentations, I think. The presentations I've been at talked a lot about the supply and the generation of open data and some of the challenges associated with, with the creation of open data. I guess I'm looking at this more from the uh, demand side. What do you do with the data when you get it? How do you know that you have the capabilities to use it effectively? How do you know that you're having an impact with the information systems and with the data that you've got? So that is the raison d'etre of, of the Innovation Value Institute. Uh, we are focused on helping companies and organizations generally be innovative through the use of IT and to develop capabilities to, to use IT effectively. So those of you who would have heard uh, uh, Ed McDonald's presentation earlier on will have heard what a technology center is, and we are also a technology center in the IBI, the Innovation Value Institute. So we've been in existence for uh, five or six years now and have been quite successful uh, in terms of the range of the companies that we're, we're engaged with, the uh, amount of income that, uh, and revenue that we're generating, the output in terms of academic research and indeed uh, practitioner research. So, so um, things are, are on an upward curve in the IVI in terms of our activities. Uh, the membership uh, runs to over 100 organizations, uh, private industry, uh, public service organizations. You know, you'll see a lot of uh, recognizable names in there, uh, public sector and private uh, companies, um, banks, uh, city councils. And in terms of governance, the, the three organizations who set this up originally are uh, Intel, Boston Consulting Group, and uh, Maynooth University. And these three organizations uh, are the steering patrons of the IVI. So, what we're interested in is how do you use data and uh, information systems to enable innovation? So we're not so concerned about the uh, software engineering fundamentals, uh, although I'm an engineer myself and, and I certainly find that interesting, but in the context of what we're trying to achieve in the IVI, it's, it's not about the uh, software engineering or the computer science. It's about how do we know that this uh, technology and this data and information is having an impact? How do you measure that impact? Uh, how do you develop capabilities that will generate business value from that impact? So it's high up the stack. It's not at the uh, fundamental technological level. We have a very active uh, community. Um, and I think one of the things that uh, Pauline asked me to, to stress today was the way we work with companies the interaction model we have with companies to help them use their data uh, effectively. And um, we have not an arm's length relationship with, with these organizations. You know, typically, uh, coming from an academic institution like uh, the university, Maynooth University, traditionally there's a bit of an um, arm's length um, relationship between universities and academics generally and uh, end users and customers. Um, that's not the case in a technology center uh, like the IVI or indeed CEDAR. Uh, we have uh, research working groups that are often populated 
by uh, practitioners, by, by researchers also, but the, uh, the research tends to be uh, practitioner-led. And we have a number of uh, conferences each year, one in the States, one in Ireland, as well as numerous um, working group workshops and so on. So this is a very uh, vibrant and uh, active open innovation ecosystem, I guess, if you want to use that word. So at the heart of this is what we call the IT capability maturity framework. This is the framework, this is the model to help companies uh, understand where they are right now in their abilities to leverage their IT systems and their data and where they want to get to in the future. So it's, a, it's, it's an instrument, it's a tool to manage continuous improvement in IT. And it's uh, made up of uh, 35 fundamental kind of building blocks, uh, each of them relating to an aspect of IT management and IT innovation. And uh, I guess one way to think of this is I like a periodic table of elements, you know, that these are the fundamental building blocks that are going to be leveraging the data that you're providing as an organization. And then the challenge is how to manage these uh, 35 building blocks uh, successfully. And how we do that is through this type of organizational maturity framework where at the lowest level, uh, you may not be very sophisticated, you may not be very progressive in, in how you're approaching your information systems management, your data management. But as you progress <coughs> up along the curve uh, to the higher maturity levels, then you become more, um, more sophisticated, more effective. And we help organizations map where they at the minute and where they want to get to in terms of their, their management capability. <clears throat> so this is quite a, a large and complex uh, knowledge base. Uh, at, the, at the highest level of, of maturity in terms of the architecture, we've got certain macro level capabilities and these devolve down to those 35 critical capabilities that I, I mentioned. And then we've got building blocks and assessment uh, questions and at the lowest level, we've got a whole lot of data around uh, what's worked, what hasn't worked, what are the kinds of practices, outcomes, metrics that are used uh, with respect to organizations, uh, information and data across, uh, across both public and private sectors. So uh, how do we manage this relationship? You know, this question that Pauline posed about what's, is, What's different or is there anything particular about how we manage to drive innovation uh, with our uh, 100 plus companies? Well, fundamentally, we use an approach called uh, design science. Design science is a very systematic approach to driving uh, innovation improvements. It's based on work originally by Herb Simon. And the idea is that you focus on gathering data from the environment in which you find yourself in, the context in which you find yourself in, whether it's public service or, or, or a private industry. You develop uh, the problem statements from that, and then you do IT research that is indeed relevant and rigorous. So uh, I think I put it well earlier on when he said that you know, this is a practice-driven, industry-driven activity. It's not a purely uh, theoretical exercise. You know, we're focused on solving real problems. But we try to get this balance of relevance and rigor right. And we have quite a detailed and um, uh, structured approach to developing outputs in the Innovation Value Institute based around these three cycles of design science. The relevance cycle and making sure that what we're doing in the institute is indeed relevant to, to the public at large and in particular to the companies that are part of the IBI. And we, do, and we enter the design cycle where we come up with uh, solutions to industry problems and evaluate those solutions. And then we provide a rigor cycle. You know, is, this, is this being done systematically? Is it a bulletproof research process that can be uh, replicated and does it stand up to international uh, peer review and, and scrutiny. And we uh, are also quite um, uh, rigorous about how we 
scope, the different types of innovations that we develop in the IT space with, with companies. These innovations can be um, either in an area that uh, a market that's quite old and mature, or, and it can also be coming up with means and methods that are uh, relatively mature, or indeed it can be new. So you, you can find yourself and in any one of these four quadrants on the top right-hand side, looking at known solutions to known problems is obviously uh, giving you limited uh, research opportunity and research um, scope. But as you cycle through the uh, four quadrants, you'll see that depending on the mix of solutions and application domains, then you can uh, map, start to map value onto these uh, outcomes, these research outcomes. So we, we're, uh, we've been using this design science uh, approach now for five or six years, and this is a shameless plug that we're hosting the International Design Science Conference in a week or two, Clontarf Castle. Uh, so we'll have about 150 of the top design scientists in the world uh, congregating at that to discuss uh, how you use this type of approach to enhance uh, innovation and outputs. So a lot of our work is case-based. You know, it's, it's working with companies to drive uh, innovation projects and drive um, the development of innovation capacity in those companies. So an example might be Chevron, a large American company that you're, I'm sure you've all heard of. They were concerned about their innovation capability and how they would, in the IT organization in particular, develop uh, a more strategic view of what IT can do for, for Chevron. And we worked with them through the, the various elements of that uh, strategy, everything from the strategy and man strategic and management issues, the people and cultural issues, the processes, tools, uh, metrics, the data required to drive that uh, innovation capability within Chevron. So that was, a, I guess, a typical uh, engagement where we would have uh, use that type of design science approach to help them become more innovative in IT. Um, some current research projects that uh, are probably more aligned to some of the topics that we've heard today. Um, we've got a project funded by the Irish Research Council at the moment that's looking at two issues. One is the factors that influence the diffusion of open data for service innovation. That's a, an enterprise partnership screen that we're, uh, we're running with a large multinational company. Uh, we're also developing maturity models for cities. So that type of uh, IT strategic uh, maturity model approach that I described earlier on for uh, public service organizations or for private organizations, we're rolling that out and developing it for, for urban contexts. Uh, we are working with the Irish Software Research Institute, Lero, that's a uh, hub out of University of Limerick, but has uh, members in all of the seven universities. And the basic theme of that work, uh, which is starting this year, but which will be a five-year project, is around IT for urban competitiveness. And there are a couple of particular strands to that work. Uh, one is the development of, okay, two minutes, thanks. One is the development of a, uh, reference architecture, an urban reference architecture for a city, what that would look like. Also looking at uh, business models, uh, in particular the business models in the era of the Internet of Things and what types of business models make sense for a city. And this is um, also relevant to the third project that's ongoing at the moment. Uh, this is in the context of the European Innovation Partnership where we're looking at a range of cities across Europe and understanding what their funding models are, their uh, procurement practices are, and their, their financial practices are. Again, the, the, the thrust of this is to understand the impact, and how do you understand the, the ROI also in terms of IT for cities? Um, and that's due to report out in May of this year. So, uh, concluding remarks, that is, uh, IVI is an open innovation ecosystem where we're 100 organizations, we have a strong focus on impact and, and value assessment. 
and we think that we've got a really tight coupling between uh, research and practice and uh, I think that that's that that approach that I've described that uh, linkage between uh, academia and uh, business is something that we're we're proud of. Well, thank you very much. Thanks.